Hey guys, today I want to show you how to do something a little bit different than we usually do. I'm going to show you how to barbecue and smoke uh, if you just have a propane grill. Uh, this can be achieved pretty easily with most propane grills. You can remove one of the cook grates and kind of get down to the uh, area where the flames are coming out and you can buy one of these little stainless steel boxes like I do in this video to put on top of that fire that holds the wood. And then when you close the, the lid on your grill, you adjust your burners to get it to the right temperature and that fire underneath the, uh, underneath the, the smoke box I was talking about catches the wood on fire and it makes it kind of into a smoker. And it works really well. It's something you can do at home. It takes a little bit of finessing with your gas regulators on there to kind of get, you know, just the right amount of flame to keep your internal temperature, but it does work really well and it's something you can do if you don't own a smoker yet or you don't want to jump in and spend a thousand bucks on something you've never done. You can do this with any product, but I decided to tackle brisket for this one to show you that even the hardest products uh, to barbecue and smoke that, that seem the most daunting, you can do it on your propane grill. You could do this on a charcoal grill the same way. Uh, you know, it, it, it works, everything works the same in barbecue as far as internal temperatures go and being exposed to smoke for a certain amount of time. So you just kind of have to adapt. Uh, but anyway, this was a really big success and all I had to do was purchase a little stainless steel box on Amazon. I don't know what it was, 15 or 20 bucks or something like that. But there's lots of different companies that make them, so it's easy enough. So let's get started with this video and I'll show you the process that I went through to smoke a brisket on a propane grill. All right, here's the video. And the brisket I'm using is a huge USDA Choice Packer brisket. This is a 20 pound brisket we're using today. So I always unwrap it and get some paper towels and dry it off. I'm not gonna go into every little tiny step of cooking a brisket on this because I have other videos doing that, but we'll go through it. This is the meat side of the brisket. And on the meat side of the brisket, I like to, after I've dried it off, take almost all the fat off. And this will be the side that the brisket sits on when it's cooking. It'll cook meat side down. So I take all the fat off and I go around the entire outside of it and take any large clumps of fat or brown tissue off there that just doesn't look good from oxidized or whatever. And then I round everything off. That way there's no sharp little points that'll dry out or burn. And then we have the flat and the point here on this fat side. Uh, this is the fat side of the brisket. And I like to take most of the fat off of the point, like I'm doing right now. This is the point side on the right. And I'm taking most of those large pieces of fat off because the point itself is so juicy, you just don't need those big blobs of fat on the outside. But I do leave, as you can see, I do leave a nice blanket of fat on the flat side over there. I like to cook fat side up. There's the flat, there's the point. And I like to leave a quarter inch to a half inch of fat over the flat. Sorry I'm going so fast through this, but I have several videos showing how I, uh, how I trim a brisket. Now I'm going to mix up some injection. This is Butcher Barbecue's brisket injection. It's the one I like to use the most. And uh, we'll just go in every few inches on this brisket on both sides and, and pump it full of this, this good briny injection. I like to do this the day before and let it sit in the refrigerator overnight with both the injection in it uh, to allow it to marinate and brine. And I also like to have the dry rub in it as, it as it sits all night. You don't have to. You could go straight to the smoker or grill with this if you wanted to. But I like to do this the day before uh, and then set it in the fridge. So like I said, we're just going to go in every few inches here and, and pump this thing full of that wonderful injection. Uh, it's not an overpowering flavor. If you've never used an injection, you're afraid it might change the flavor it, it adds flavor for sure, but it's a beefy, smoked, briskety flavor it adds, so it doesn't overpower it with some strange adjunct seasoning. Unless you buy like one that's flavored, Cajun blend or something like that. I always just go with Dave's, Dave Gluska's uh, Butcher Barbecue Brisket Injection. And then you see how it's kind of smeared on the outside there? That makes a really good surface to, for your dry rub to stick to. So I always kind of smear it around with my hands. This is Payne County Rust Seasoning. It's my blend that I sell, but I love it on brisket. I use lots of people's products, as you've seen in other videos, but uh, I, I love this one for brisket, so I use my own. And I usually dry rub the meat side first like this because I'm going to flip it over and lay it down on the meat side when it cooks. And I'm going to, uh, and so I don't, I don't really care if it's, you know, kind of rubbed around or damaged a little bit or smeared. 
pat it down with my hands and I'm going to flip it over because I like to cook briskets fat side up. My favorite bark, that being the outside dark, kind of crunchy part of barbecue, my favorite bark is bark that is made on fat. So I cook fat side up and take care of the bark the best way like that. And you can really get a good even coating of seasoning like I'm doing here by sprinkling it on from like a foot or a foot and a half above the product. For some reason it goes on really evenly if you do that. That's how it goes on so evenly. So I cover it all in this and pat it in there nicely and then we'll put it in the fridge uh, to sleep for the night with that injection inside the brisket and the dry rub on the outside. Foil it up and put it in the fridge overnight to rest. And then I'll show you how I set up a propane grill uh, for smoking. You can find the little steel boxes that I use that hold the wood chunks anywhere on Amazon. There's a hundred people that make them. So I'll take this deflector bar, flavorizer bar, whatever you call it, off of there. And then you can see the propane coming out down there from the pipe. And this is that little stainless box that I bought. And you just plop it down there and put some wood chunks in it. And they'll burn at a very high temperature. So you get those good oils as, uh, that you want the uh, syringol and the glycol to be produced. And they'll, they'll coat this brisket, as you'll see, and we'll get a good heavy bark on there. And then you just have to have a drip pan so you don't flood your porch with brisket juice. And I put a, just a metal grill grate over it. You'll have to come up with some way to do this. I buy these full-size steam pans and use them as drip pans. And then that's just a grill rack that I have. And there's that big USDA choice brisket that we injected in, in dry rub the night before. So that's our smoker setup. That's our setup of a propane grill. And you can see how it works. The fire lights that wood down there and it causes your oils and your smoke to cause a smoke chamber. And then we just set those, uh, set those grills. I have three burners on this one. You just set them to where it keeps a 225 to 250 degree fire. And about every 45 minutes, I'd add another piece of wood like that. It was a pretty simple process. Here we are about, oh, two and a half hours in. And now it's safe to spray it. You can use any kind of wet mop you want. I'm just using water today. But I like to spray the edges to make sure they don't burn and get too dried out. And you don't do that until it's been about two and a half hours because you want that crust to set on the outside and that dry rub to not wash off whenever you spray it course add another piece of wood while we're in there. But you can see this is looking a lot like a brisket would look in an offset smoker. We are cooking meat in the presence of smoke. Even though it's not built for it, you can still get a good barbecue. Now this is five hours in. I'm going to smoke this longer than I normally do. I'm going to smoke it for 10 hours on this cook. But at five hours you can see we're getting a really good crust. Getting a good bark on this just like you would in a smoker because we're burning that oak and religiously putting a new chunk on there every 45 minutes. So we got plenty of smoke rolling through that chamber and adhering to the outside of the meat. You can see the smoke barreling out of this thing. And it's a good clean smoke because that high heat propane does a good job. So here we are at 10 hours. 10 hours in, I was, I've decided the fat's rendered enough and we're going to go for the second part of the barbecue step, the second step rather, which is the braise. Just like always, we're going to wrap it in two pieces of heavy-duty aluminum foil and transfer it to an oven. You could finish it in the grill if you wanted, but I think it'd be a waste of your propane on your porch. So just like always, I like to stick an internal uh, meat thermometer into the deepest portion of the point, and we're going to wait for an internal temperature of 205 degrees. I'm going to set my oven at 265 degrees, and it'll come to temperature here in a few minutes. And then we'll let this sucker smoke until we get that 205 internal temperature. And then we'll do our third phase of the barbecue, which is the rest. We have three phases of barbecue always, three steps. You smoke it, then you braise it, then you rest it. Almost all barbecue cuts you do this way. So there's the 205 degree internal temperature. So our braise is done. And you can rest this for a couple hours on top of the oven, or you can rest it in an ice chest for several hours, or you can do this. This is one of my favorite ways with a brisket or a pork butt. I let some of the heat out of that oven, and I've turned the oven off, as you saw. And then we'll shut the oven up, and I'm going to let this brisket sit in the oven all night long and cool down very slowly so that we get a really good retention of all those internal uh, fluids. And that keeps a moist, moist product, as you'll see here in a second.
This is the next morning. It's still warm inside. And there's our brisket. I'll take it out and I'll slice it up for you and show you how good this brisket turned out. Even though we didn't cook it in a smoker, we cooked it on a propane grill, kind of set up for a smoke. So that's the point on the left and the flat is over there on the right. We're going to slice it to about, to about there, to about halfway across. Because then the point muscle, the grain, runs the different way. And we'll have to slice it differently. So here's these quarter inch slices coming off. You can see there is a smoke ring. We've got good bark. Really good moisture on this on this brisket. It was very, very tender. You can see how, how carefully I'm having to cut this very sharp knife, too. But you have to go really slow because it's so tender from resting all night long like that. See how soft it is and how moist? This brisket came out great. I would say it's 20 or maybe 30% milder uh, as far as the smoke flavor goes than if you were to cook it in like an offset smoker or Weber Smoky Mountain, something like that. You know, one that's a, a, a traditional smoker. But my gosh, it was good. I, it was shockingly good. Look at the moisture retention we have from that overnight rest. So we'll slice this to that halfway point. And you can see this, the point is starting to, to appear on top of the flat there. And so it's time to turn this thing 90 degree, degrees and cut the, the point up. We'll cut it into burn ends today. I like to use a spatula to move these slices because it's very tender. Get them over into our tray. So there's the flat sliced up with the lean, also called the lean. Pretty smoke ring. And then I like to cut the point. Uh, you, you turn the point 90 degrees and cut it. I cut it into these big steaks like this, and that allows me to cube it up into burn ends easier. You can just cut it in half and even cut those big chunks of fat out of the middle like this. This is always a messy job. And then you can cube each of these uh, steaks up uh, into Kansas City, Kansas City style burn ends. If that's what you want to do, you can also slice that part. So there's our end product. There's our burn ends and our slices of brisket smoked on a propane grill. It turned out a lot better than I thought it would. Uh, I've done things like this before, just never a brisket. Uh, but I knew if I followed that, uh, those rules that I've laid out for you guys in other videos uh, that we'd have a lot of success with this. Uh, I, if this is the first time you've watched any of my videos, then I'll show you where you can go here on my website. This is paincountyrust.com. This is where I sell all my all my products and everything. But I have a, a tab up here called Charts and Resources. And if you go there, I have two different charts in the very beginning. One's called Tough Cuts and one is called Tender Cuts. And what they do is they lay out for you. This is the product over here, and it tells you the smoking temperature, the approximate smoking time, whether or not you braise it, the internal temperature you're trying to reach when it's done with the braise, and how long you need to rest it. Uh, and this does it for all the different cuts, brisket and beef ribs and picnic, uh, butt roasts and, and, and pork ribs, all, all kinds of stuff. Everything that I can think of that's a tough cut that takes a long time and debraises on this sheet. And then there's another sheet here for tender cuts if you're cooking chicken or turkey or ham, sausages, things like that. It's laid out the same way. And then I have one that's kind of a simplified version that just has the internal temperature if you need a reminder. Please download these and print them, and you can use them uh, whenever you're barbecuing. Uh, this video kind of proves that this endpoint in, in internal temperature right here is a really, really good way to get really close your first time you ever do anything to having a perfect product. Some briskets are going to want to go up to 210 before they're super tender, uh, and some are done at 202 or 203, but this... If you take a brisket to an internal temperature of 205 degrees, or you take uh, beef ribs up to 25 to 210, um, if you do this each time, you're going to have a lot of success your very first time you do any of it. These cheat sheets, to me, are, are a really important kind of uh, supplement to all the videos that I do. So please go to paincountyrest.com, go to Charts and Resources, download and print these, and keep them with your stuff. Um, They'll go along with the videos nicely. And there's some other stuff on here, too, you can download. There's uh, all kinds of cheat sheets and lists and tables and papers and stuff like that. But anyway, uh, that's how you can barbecue or smoke a product on a propane grill. You kind of turn it into a smoker. Buy a little stainless steel box like that. 
uh, on Amazon or wherever you could find one and load it with some little uh, chunks of wood. And this didn't take too much propane either. I cooked on it for 10 hours. I started with a propane tank that wasn't even half full uh, and it's still not empty. So you have them turned down so far, the burners turned down so far that it actually doesn't use that much propane. So I was kind of concerned about that, but there's still plenty of propane left in that tank. Uh, I did purchase an extra propane tank just in case I ran out, and I would I would recommend to anyone who has a propane grill to always keep two propane tanks because nothing worse than running out of propane in the middle of one of your cooks. So anyway, thank you so much for watching today. I really appreciate you all, and I hope you've gotten something out of this video. See you later.